In the Lakota language, there's no word for art. There's no word to separate that impulse, that process. It's so integral to who we are. You just look out in the world, and you can see that the world is just a world of fragrance and movement and sound and beauty and color and harmony and balance. And so we ourselves, as being a part of this, is just the most natural possible thing to express ourselves as a part of this great hoop of life. We use the arts as a way to connect us to reality, to connect us with, which, with that which is good, which is real, which is, uh, which is eternal, timeless. O oh, great spirit, whose voice I hear in the wind, and whose breath gives life to all the world. Well, the reason why I perform is because that's the most direct way of connecting with people heart to heart because there's so much of a barrier between people. It's that people long for some venue, some means, some instrumentality through which they can connect with each other. This the area where I live, like in the Ojibwe language, the word for coffee is makade uh, mashkiki wabu. Makade mashkiki wabu. So never try and ask for decaf. <laughs> Anywhere you, you go in the world with the folk arts, they can relate to it because what they can see is that universality that comes through, the, the universal inclination of the human spirit to express itself with refinement and beauty and nobility and dignity. And so to me, this is what the folk arts are all about. Now I've traveled over the course of my life, especially the last 20 years, to over 70 countries, nearly 80, I believe it's 79 countries. And in my travel, I've encountered many diverse peoples on all the continents, Asia, Europe, Africa, South America, Central America, the Pacific, just everywhere, from the, the most remote places, and I've been there. But to me, the most important audiences are the young audiences especially the children and junior youth. That's really the target audience because these are the ones that you can reach them and plant a seed in their hearts and their minds. Because, you know, this like, for you and I, what helps us to grow is when we receive the light of knowledge. You ever think of knowledge as light? So every day, when you guys learn your lessons, it's like that light comes into your mind and your mind can grow just like the plants that grow in spring. And then, of course, we need the warmth, too, just like in the spring, the sun gets warm, and that warmth is like the love and the, uh, the way we can show respect to each other and treat each other good in a good way, respectfully, and be trustworthy. Well, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah! You guys get it? For sure? Okay. The basic message of the hoop dance is to accentuate the interconnectedness of all creation and how we as human beings are integral within this interrelationship. And the way I do it is to use uh, 28 hoops. The 28 hoops symbolize the number of days in the lunar cycle, especially the one corresponding to the transition from the cold, dark, lifeless, colorless condition that we call winter into the condition of color and sound and beauty and fragrance and movement and light and life. And we call that spring. And I use the four different colors of hoops to symbolize the different powers in the universe, the four directions, the seasons, the elements, and of course all the diverse kindreds of the human family and how this is symbolic of what occurs when the divine spirit is breathed into the hearts and minds of the people and then they can, they can come to life and we can have visions and we can have joy and happiness and all that 
this unity and all the things that are holding us back just fade away just like the winter. Humankind has to go through this great transformation now. And so we have to be very focused about creating this paradigm shift in the world. So when I do the hoop dance, it's like a prayer that this process could be accelerated, that all the different peoples of the world, different tribes, different kindreds, could indeed bring this world to life. I find people really all over, even though outwardly we're so different, we all come in different packaging, different complexions, different outward trappings, yet within ourselves, within our heart, within our spirit, there is such a commonality and when we in engage or connect with our musical traditions, the barrier between ourselves and our past, our ancestors, this is obliterated and we can begin to feel the prayers and feel the vision and the hopes and the, and the longings of our ancestors and see how we can begin to bring this into reality or fulfillment as we begin to see our place in this great hoop of life and all the peoples connecting, the barrier between the generations, that's all erased as we all gather together around our musical and dance traditions. What the folk arts express is something that transcends culture or tribal specific limitations and hones in on this universal spirit that attracts and magnetizes, galvanizes all people. That's your style, that's your style. Thank <laughs> you.